Lawmakers are targeting the potential threat of foreign buyers purchasing assets in Texas. During a hearing at the state capitol, leaders raised concerns about farmland and tech companies owned by companies associated with the Chinese government. Republicans backed a bill last year to ban Chinese citizens from owning property, but it failed after passionate debate. Our Ryan Chandler reports on how Texas could act now. Who gets to own a piece of Texas? Some Texas leaders say our greatest foreign threat is already here. The United States is under a pervasive threat from the Chinese Communist Party and the People's Republic of China, from Russia, from Iran, and from North Korea. Nationwide, just about 3% of farmland is owned by foreign interests, most of that by friendly nations. Less than 1% of that 3% is owned by Chinese entities. But Texas has the greatest share of Chinese-owned land at about 162,000 acres. Some worry that could expose us to threats like surveillance and economic influence. It's not a, tar a conflict where we're targeting military versus military. They've actually t taken an asymmetric approach where they're targeting civilian critical infrastructure. 24 states already forbid or limit foreign ownership of farmland. Last session, Texas Republicans backed a bill to ban all citizens of hostile nations from buying any property. That is plainly racist, and our community will not stand for it. That bill failed after opponents worried it would discriminate against immigrants, even private citizens looking to buy a home. There's a lot of us who fled here because of the Chinese government, who escaped to America to seek freedom and liberty. Are we all enemies to you? Next session, advocates hope for more success, targeting entities explicitly associated with hostile governments rather than individuals. Ryan Chandler, State of Texas. Another issue raised at the hearing, corporations and their reliance on cheaper and potentially less secure Chinese-based technology. State lawmakers are also considering legislation to encourage the use of American-made technology instead. The seventh strongest earthquake in our state's history shook West Texas late Monday night. A total of three quakes hit between Snyder and Roby, Texas. The most powerful reached a magnitude of 4.9. Some people reported feeling tremors as far away as the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. The number of West Texas quakes has been rising. Monica Madden found that's brought scrutiny to one aspect of oil and gas production. It dawned on me. I thought, well, you know, it's an earthquake. Shock in West Texas. I felt just a little something, and then it sounded like a herd of animals run across my roof. After one of the strongest geological tremors in Texas history. I felt one or two before, but not anything like that. And that there is a relationship between oil field activities and seismicity in West Texas, in the Permian Basin, uh, but that relationship is complicated. Experts like Dr. Peter Henning say there's been an increase in seismic activity in West Texas over the last decade. The development of shale production in West Texas that began about 10 years ago in earnest uh, has resulted in a lot of water that has been produced along with all of this new oil. This water that comes with the oil uh, currently is disposed of by the process called injection where it is injected back into the subsurface at both deep levels and shallower levels uh, to dispose of the water permanently. Henning says injecting the oil water back into the ground changes the pressure underneath the surface. Kind of like pumping up the tire on a bicycle, and that changes the stress environment around these faults, and they can be made to slip, and when they slip, they can make earthquakes. He says injection remains a common practice, but there are alternative solutions being explored. There are hopes that with uh, filtration and other technologies, some of this wastewater can be used for beneficial purposes. Monica Madden, State of Texas. Texas may not be a state you think about when it comes to earthquakes. For perspective, there have actually been more than 3,500 since the year 1900, most of them small, but more than 70 were magnitude four or greater. Only six have been greater than magnitude five. The strongest quake on record in Texas was a 5.8 back in 1931. It shook a small community between El Paso and Big Bend called Valentine, causing significant damage. Take a look at this map created by digital data reporter Christopher Adams. It shows the locations of all earthquakes in Texas history. You can find more information right now on our website. We have a link in this week's State of Texas story. 
This was not something that most people had seen coming. I shall not sue, and I will not accept. History doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. We'll look at the factors surrounding LBJ's historic decision not to seek re-election, as President Biden heads to Texas to commemorate one of Johnson's biggest impacts on America.